We officially welcomed autumn last Thursday, and though I suspect most people have a general sense of what happens astronomically on the autumnal equinox, it's worth a closer look. Now, because the Earth is tilted on its axis of rotation, the northern and southern hemispheres almost always receive different amounts of sunlight. But on two special days, the spring and the fall equinox, the plane passing through the equator lines up with the center of the sun, so neither hemisphere has an edge. As a result, at a specific time on each of those days, the sun will be right overhead at the equator. This year, that happened last Thursday at 10.21 a.m. Eastern Time. The exact point at which the sun was right overhead was just north of the eastern tip of Brazil. To see how this looks from space, here's a satellite image from last Thursday. The yellow line is the equator. The dashed white line separates the day and night sides of the Earth. That's called the terminator. And notice it parallels the longitude lines running north to south. So each hemisphere is equally lit. Now here's that same view at the same time of day, but on the first day of northern hemisphere, summer. Here the shape of the terminator clearly allows the northern hemisphere to get more sunshine. And finally, here's that view, but on the first day of northern hemisphere, winter. Now the terminator is sloped the other way, allowing more of the southern hemisphere than northern to be bathed in sunlight. Now back to the equinoxes, when Mother Nature provides us with a built-in compass, a way to map out east and west on your horizon. That's because the sun truly does rise due east and set due west on both the first day of spring and the first day of autumn. And from now until the first day of spring, the sun will rise south of east and set south of west. Now to one misconception. The word equinox means equal night in Latin. The idea being that on the equinoxes, the 24-hour day is exactly split between daylight and darkness. But the sunrise-sunset table for this month in central Pennsylvania shows that's not the case. The sun rose and set 12 hours apart this year on September 25th, three days after the equinox. There's two reasons for this. First, when sunlight passes through our atmosphere, it bends or refracts in such a way that even when the sun is just below the horizon, it appears slightly above the horizon because we see in straight lines, despite the bent path of the sun. The second reason involves how we define sunrise and sunset. The sun is a disk, not a point. Sunrise and sunset are defined as when the upper portion of the disk appears and disappears, not the center. Together, these factors add a few minutes of daylight, so the calendar date when day and night are equal occurs after the equinox, with the number of days after increasing as you move south. In Miami, Florida, for example, it was just yesterday, a full five days after the equinox. One other equinox-related number that depends on latitude, the rate at which we're losing daylight. In most of Pennsylvania right now, it's about two and a half minutes per day, the most of any time of the year. In South Florida, it's just a minute and a half. In Northern Maine, almost three and a half minutes per day. Stay tuned, the extended forecast is next.